Energy poverty may be defined as the lack of adequate, accessible and affordable energy to promote economic growth and satisfy basic human needs. The alleviation of energy poverty should therefore form a key pillar in strategies to achieve sustainable development. Ofid is of the opinion that the alleviation of energy poverty, although not a goal on its own, is central to achievement of the eight internationally embraced Millennium Development Goals. Many of us involved in development cooperation are persuaded that the alleviation of energy poverty is a missing ninth Millennium Development Goal. When the Millennium Development Goals were adopted in 2000, the focus then was on social sector development, health education, uh, women's issues and so on. I think 10 years later it has become very obvious that without access to energy we cannot really achieve any of the MDGs. However, having said that, the problem now is politics because indeed we, the, the political um, in the political discussions of the MDGs a decision has already been taken a priori to ring fence the eight goals so that nothing else is added. Um, so energy issues were not brought in as a, another goal. Uh, energy for the poor or alleviation of energy poverty is really one of the fundamentals of, of, uh, of, uh, of the, one of the pillars for, for economic development and social development in developing countries, especially in Africa and Sub-Sahara, is that uh, it's needed for, for two purposes. One is as a basic requirement for cooking, for heating, uh, and uh, of course the other, the other uh, aspect or need is to uh, is the energy for the economic and social development. You cannot really achieve these uh, eight Millennium Development Goals without uh, uh, providing energy, uh, mainly electricity uh, for hospitals, schools and other uh, infrastructure and facilities. Human development and energy use are inherently linked. Energy is development because without energy to fuel industry and support business, hospitals and schools, there can be no economic or social progress. It is of concern that a large part of the global population is still without access to basic sources of energy and close to 1.5 billion people lack electricity. Most of them suffer the health consequences of inefficient combustion of solid fuels as well as the economic consequences of insufficient power for productive activities and for other basic services. 80% of carbon dioxide emissions come from energy systems. Over 60% of all greenhouse gases come from energy systems. So if you want to solve climate change, you must have an energy revolution. And at the same time, it is unacceptable to have almost one third of mankind, the 1.6 billion people who have no access to electricity living in darkness. And it's those same people that do not have regular water supply in the homes. It is those same people who do not have basic energy supply for lighting, for cooking, and so on. And I mentioned earlier that about, based on WHO estimates, about 1.5 million to 2 million people die every year from indoor air pollution, from incomplete combustion of bio, biomass. Most of them are women and children. OFID believes that the developing countries must be helped to build capacity in the areas of generation, transmission and distribution so that electricity supply becomes regular and efficient. Also, OFID believes that innovative methods in terms of financing as well as sources of energy must be found to the needs of the very poor. In working to alleviate energy poverty, OFID supports the development of energy infrastructure through the extension of highly concessional loans to governments and soft loans to the private sector. The provision of microfinance products to break the vicious circle energy poverty that links energy development, real demand and income. The international trade of energy products benefiting developing countries. Institutional and human capacity building in the field of energy through the provision of grant assistance.
For us, Ofeed, uh, when we talk about energy for the poor, that doesn't mean that we are starting a new program. Actually, we have been doing this for the last uh, 20, uh, 35 years. Uh, our commitment is no less than 20%, but we are now trying to expand our commitment and we're trying to look for ways and means of enhancing uh, our financial uh, ability to do more. While energy poverty is just one of the many challenges that developing countries have to overcome, it is of its belief that it is also among the most pressing. Energy poverty will thus continue to figure on OFID's agenda, as it should, at a global level also.